Hello and welcome back to Heart and Soul. We're about halfway through in terms of weeks and also in terms of the gods whose favor we have to get here. But yeah, I'm a bit worried about the loneliness because we already had three loneliness, like hitting loneliness 100 events. So yeah, I think I want to keep being a bit careful and make use of the from the estate activity even though it's a bit mean that they're always on the same day as the prey or offering option and also for these aphrodite affection activity but i think for one week at least i want to keep it up see what happens as far as activities that directly influence uh, one of the gods we only have Tending to the fields for Demeter left. Could do a bit more of that. And I mean, um, yeah, visiting the livestock and exploring the forest. For Artemis, we don't need it, but for the offerings, that's why I kept that in. I'm not sure how much we need that. I don't know. This is. <laughs> Stat raising is still tricky for me. And, I don't know, for people who play more of these stat raising games, do you think this is hard or am I just... Am I just not doing it right? I don't know. Um, anyway, I think... Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this one more time. Start the week and let's see where it takes us. I roam the wheat fields surrounding the estate. I talk with the servants about the process of growing wheat and the labor required to care for the crop. I spend the day reading one of the books from my husband's collection. It is extensive due to his travels, wealth and having a scribe on his employ. Standing in the peaceful pasture, I clasp my hands together and pray to the goddess of wild animals to keep our domesticated friends safe from predators. I assist the servants in milking the cows, taking some of the liquid with me to use later. I pester the servants as they go about their duties, asking for information about what their master is like. Though they have nothing but kind things to say about him, their praises are vague and impersonal. The strange encounter stays in my mind. I have visited the forest path several more times since, but have not come across the stag since. The unseen attendants were all confused when I brought it up to them, saying that there are no such creatures on the property's premise. The unknown only drives my curiosity further, and I have spent some time in the library to research what the creature could possibly be. It... it cannot be. But only that explanation makes sense. Armed with a tentative knowledge, I concoct a plan. With a bundle of offerings in my arms, I carefully make my way back to the clearing. It is empty, just like the times I have checked it before. But this time, I am not surprised or disappointed. Laying down the freshly cleaned hide, I reverently place down each item I have brought with me. Arrows, bow, cakes cut into crescent moons, a silver pitcher of wine and a vibrant arrangement of amaranth that I have picked myself. With the preparations done, I kneel, clasping my hands before me. O oh, goddess of the hunt! I thank you for gracing me with your sacred beast's presence. It was a sight only the most fortunate of mortals are allowed to see, and I am grateful for this blessing from the bottom of my heart. This humble mortal has nothing to her name, far away from home and awaiting an uncertain fate. I have prepared these humble offerings by myself to thank you for keeping my spark of curiosity alive 
or allowing me a vision of exquisiteness. Blessed be, O goddess of the hunt. I bow low, keeping my forehead pressed to the ground before me. Gentle hoofsteps approach. My heart picks up its pace, but I do not dare lift my head. A soft breeze brushes over me, carrying the scent of cypress and amaranth, and tinkling laughter of dancing streams. I keep my head lowered until the hoofsteps fade into the air, until the forest falls into its silence once more. And smile, upon seeing my offerings are now gone, relieved in the unexpected but pleasant visit of Artemis. That's nice, I like these little events. I share bits of my lunch with some birds today after walking around all morning. One of them even hops into my hand. I spot a beehive as I make my way back to, this, to the estate and stop to gather some honey. I am sure I can find a use for it. Okay, so we got milk and honey, very good. I spend the day reading one of the books from my husband's collection. It is extensive due to his travels, wealth and having a scribe on his employ. I would like to do more to show the gods how much respect I have for them, but what do I have to offer? Okay, we don't have any wine to make the libation, so... Uh, floral arrangement, I guess. I take the flower cuttings from the garden and arrange them flutteringly, tying them together with string. Taking my offering outside of the shrine, I consider who to give it to. Once again, still going with Zeus. I decide to dedicate my offering to the god of thunder. I hope it pleases him. Okay. Not much has happened and loneliness still going up, of course. Okay, um, so we got milk and honey, so we don't need that. Uh, I want to go to the vineyard, pick up some, some grapes, some wine. <laughs> um, then I think we can do more attending to the fields to get Demeter stats higher. Yeah, should be... Fine. Am I forgetting anything? Yeah, let's let's go with this. I assist the servants with their work in the fields as best as I can, but I have little experience in agriculture. They assure me they appreciate my good intentions. I lounge on the chaise in the main room today, asking the servants about their origins. They have little information to share, leaving me feeling more confused than before. I walk in between the rows of grape vines, surveying the plants. I enjoy the earthy smells and sights of the crop. Wanting to have the option to make wine, I harvest some grapes before leaving the vineyard. Good, good. Tonight, my time with my husband is disturbed by a knock on the door. He lets out a long sigh, then goes to see the servant outside. A moment later, he pokes his head in for a brief moment. There is some business I need to take care of. Go to sleep first if you are tired. All right. As I watch the door close behind him, questions stop bubbling up. What are the chances we have the same visitor three times in a row? Left alone in our vast bedchamber, I eye the door. Do I want to find out what business my husband has this time? Stay inside or eavesdrop? No, 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 no. We're still battling our curiosity here. And doing as he says, stay inside. With a long sigh, I lie down, curling into the comforter. It is no business of mine, and I would rather not sneak around when I can no longer see my toes. 
smoothing a hand over my pregnant stomach, I welcome sleep. This time, my husband does not take long to re-enter, slipping in onto the bed behind me. A heavy sigh escapes him as he carefully puts an arm around me. Is... is everything all right? I suppose it is. Nothing to concern yourself with. It is only some family issues. I see. Offer comfort or ask about his family. Can I not do both? I am guessing, uh, guessing asking about his family is for the curiosity. Yeah, I mean, I am curious about this, but he was always hesitant to not only show himself, but also give more information. So I guess it's better to just offer him comfort. I rub his arm soothingly, rubbing small circles onto his warm skin. Family is always complicated. He huffs out a small laugh. They can be, yes. I do feel mine is more complicated than most, though. It makes me feel... it makes me thankful for this. For you. Is that so? Perhaps when you feel up for it, you could show me some of your gratitude? A small silence fills the room. Was that the wrong thing to say? All at once, he pulls himself on top of me. I am ready. I let out a laugh of my own. Already? You are irresistible, my love. I... I do not know about that. Allow me to show you then. I surrender myself to my husband's affections, loving every bit of it. I do my best to make him feel equally special, but fear I am outmatched. Cute, but the loneliness didn't go down. I don't want to be that person just looking at the stats, but in the beginning, it went down more during the events with husband, right? <laughs> Using the loom and spinner the servants provided me with as a pastime, I work on a new set of sheets for the master bedroom while chatting with the servants. I wonder if my husband will like them. Time for an offering. I'm making some wine. The servants instruct me in the preparation of wine. I have such fun squishing down the grapes. Now that the wine is finished, should I offer it to the gods or save it to make libation another day? I'm saving the wine. I set the wine aside for later. I will be able to make an even better offering then. Okay. Good, good. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Let me think. We already made wine. Um, and, and, and. So maybe... Oh, it's tricky. Because of course, if I want to do another offering next week, like this week I want to do the libation, but next week I could... Again, use all the ingredients to make something new. It would also be uh, practical to know what the max is. Like with Demeter, I'm like my assumption is a hundred, but I don't know that. So. So how much does it give? Three or five. Sure. 
should be fine. Okay, I'm going to keep with this one more time. Okay, around the wheat fields. Uh, origins of the chase, sure. The servants instruct me on the various stages of growth for the grapes. I strive to pay attention to the lesson, but like it best when I can be hands-on. And we get some more grapes, good. Today the servants and I work on cataloging and organizing my husband's large collection of goods that have been stuffed into storerooms. What wonders he has obtained. I assist the servants with the works in their fields. More information at the master. And time for an offering. Okay. I'm making libation. Mixing honey, milk and wine together, I produce a delicious, sweet-smelling drink. Taking an offering outside of the shrine, I consider who to give it to. Again, Zeus. Confident it will please him, I am proud to dedicate my offering to the god of thunder. Okay. Okay, okay. I think we're doing fine. Okay, so we have grapes full of wine. God, I always miss struggling with the V's and W's. Um, so I think we can change this to visiting the livestock to get milk again, hopefully. I'm going yeah okay and the forest maybe for honey let's see if we can get everything already okay work in the fields making some bad sheets after brushing the coats of the animals until they are smooth I give them all lots of pats as I determine whose is the softest. A worthwhile endeavor indeed. I assist the servants in milking the cows, taking some of the liquid with me to use later. Chases. As I explore the forest, I come across a variety of animals and little habitats. Some of them are so fluffy and cute, while others encourage me to stay away. Spot a beehive and get some honey. Okay, cool. Uh, cataloging again and offering so make some wine and going to save it again okay 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 Demeter is at 99 so we'll see this week if 100 is this there max um Should I go all out? Do more tending to the fields? I don't know. Fifty-seven is okay. Uh, maybe I can pray to the gods once. risking it <laughs> um, yeah okay yeah I will try this okay working in the fields I spent the day reading one of the books from my husband's collection it is extensive due to his travels, wealth, and having a scribe on his employee. Oh. Sometimes I don't know if it's repeating or not. Animals. A week of preparations quickly passes by. Days before the festival takes place, the servants set out to pick fruits from the castle's garden, and I help them sort the best pieces of offerings. 
You do not need to help us with any of this. Especially in your current condition, it would be... Do not worry, there is nothing straining. I know all of you are extremely reali reliable, but I can hardly sit still with all the activities that are going on. Well, if you are sure... I am! Will you be enjoying the festival too? Us? We... often do not. The master is never home during the festivals, and we are not exactly... well... Seeing that they are having difficulty answering my question, I take pity and smile. This year will be a little bit different, I would say. I have never celebrated a festival without my family, and I know my husband must attend the festivities in Olympus. I would appreciate the company if you would be willing to provide it. There is a silence among my peers. Unable to see their reactions, I keep my face neutral, waiting patiently and hoping that they would give in to my suggestion. Well, if you so will it, we shall celebrate with you. Though we are not certain there is much we can entertain you with, other than our usual routines. Would you like us to prepare a performance for you? Excellent! But no, I will not require any performance after the rituals. Perhaps we may sit down and talk for a while? Despite everything, I can tell the servants are surprised by my request. A conversation? Indeed, I have stayed here for quite some time. Though you all have provided flawless services, I fear I have not taken the time to know you all that well. We shall entertain you with our tales then. Thank you. Okay. Do you have everything for your journey to visit Zeus? Ever everything is here. Thank you for preparing all of this. Of course. You did not have to prepare so much, though. I am still going to return to you each night. Oh, I did not realize that was your plan. All that travel seems taxing. Oh, you should stay in Olympus or I will be happy to receive you. Ha. Huh. I mean, if it was his plan anyway, then he should be here, yeah? That's hard. Because it's this is the kind of thing that you want to discuss with your partner and not just choose, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but I mean, let's spend time together, sure. If, if it is not too taxing for you, I would be happy to have you home. Then it shall be. He places a gentle kiss upon my brows. Now, shall I remind you of one of the many reasons I look forward, forward to coming back each night? P please do. That's so cute. Today I offer up my gratitude and respect to the King of the Gods and Overseer of the Earth, Zeus. The end of summer comes with cooling wind, yellowing trees, and an endless field of heavy golden weeds. I cup the heavy bloom in my hands, still in disbelief that, yes, it is I who has cultivated such beauty. Standing here, among swaying stalks hanging the fruit of my labor, an indescribable sense of peace wells up within me. I did this. I have achieved this. By the grace of Lady Demeter, I, a lonely girl, have done this. 
As promised, I seek the heaviest, lowest hanging weed I could find and reap them. Carefully, I place the bundle upon Demeter's offering altar, kneeling with my hands clasped. My lady Demeter, it is harvest day today. By your blessings, our once empty field is bountiful and abundant. The earth is carpeted with golden wheat, and the wind carries the scent of its nectar. Thank you, she of the grain. Thank you for allowing me this privilege and granting your favor to our fields. Please, continue to guide us as we harvest our crop and prepare the fields for future success. Outside, the wind rustles through the grains, as if singing its, its approval. Okay, assisting the servants. Pestering the servants about the master. And time for the offering, making the libation again. And giving it to Zeus. Okay, yeah. Okay, Demeter was 100. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, then we only have Hades, Hera and Zeus left. And we don't have specific options for them, just praying and offerings. Uh, the moon is quite high again. This is a struggle. Okay, let me see. Um... We have to do one of these options. So I guess on these days we should use the options to get some stuff for the offerings. So wine, milk, honey. I don't know if I will be able to go down in loneliness enough again, but I uh, have to try. So praying and preparing an offering also gives the most loneliness. Well, the other days it can be five, but off the offerings and praying is always five, so... Tricky, tricky. Um, yeah, I'll go with this. Should I go more with the Aphrodite task? I don't know. Uh. Let's see. Okay, growth of the grapes. And getting some grapes for later. Another surprise visit comes too soon after the last, with only weeks in between. I wish we could just be left alone. Every arrival of an un uninvited guest makes my heart race. My husband seems to be prepared to handle the situation, quickly standing up as the servant knocks. Another late visitor? So it seems. Stay put, dear Psyche. I shall resolve this as soon as possible. All right. No, staying inside, not eavesdropping. I go through my nightly routines and get into bed. As I grow heavier with our child, it is getting more difficult to have the drive to go anywhere. Fatigue comes easily with every movement and the passage of time only makes me sleepier. A satisfied sigh escapes me as I swathe myself in soft blankets. It does not take long at all for me to fall into a deep slumber. Hmm, okay. Launching in the chaise. Waiting for my husband's return has long become part of my routine. He has been so endlessly patient with me over the past months and so impossibly kind. It has certainly brought us close, from my need to ease my loneliness, and his urge to please me. 
A smile spreads across my face when I hear him enter our room. Home at last. How are you, my love? My husband makes his way over to me, resting in our bed, and climbs in hins himself. Better, now that you are here. He presses a kiss on my lips, sweet and gentle, like nectar. I regret I cannot spend more time with you, though I look forward to coming home and seeing you always. How has your day been? I finished cataloging the third storage room recently, as you know. Yes, I remember you mentioning that to me. I decided to spend some time in the library today. Some sections are not properly arranged, it seems. Ah, I see. Those must be the pieces of work I collected recently. The library used to be more meticulous, but uh, I've been neglecting it lately. Why is that? Do you not enjoy spending time there anymore? He chuckles, reaching for my hair and twirling it between his fingers. No, I would rather spend my free time with you instead. Uh, oh! Does that surprise you? That I would want to spend every free moment with my beautiful wife? I suppose not. Maybe you would rather I be in the library instead? I could always leave. He starts to sit up. Alarmed, I throw my arms around him. I want you here, with me. All the time you have to spare, I want it. My husband tips my chin upwards with his finger and kisses me deeply. I want you, Psyche. Always. It did go down. Okay, offerings. Uh, we're making wine again. And saving it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're still, we're still doing fine. Uh, getting more. already have the other things. I don't know. <sighs> what could I do instead? I mean, I don't have any flowers left anymore, but yeah, I still want to make use of the roaming the estate option. I'm so sorry. Hope it's not too boring once again. Trying to play it safe a little here. And I don't know if it matters changing stuff around, like if I go visit the livestock on Tuesday and or on Thursday, like switching these around. Does it matter? I don't know. But yeah. Let's see. With vines held between my class tents, I kneel amongst the fruit and pray for the god of wine's blessing. And we get some more grapes. We're cataloging and organizing. Praying to the goddess of wild animals. Getting some milk. Oh, I didn't have any milk, okay. Good. Ah, uh, cataloging. Share bits of lunch with birds in the forest and getting some honey. Good, good. Lunging on the chaise and preparing libation again. Mixing honey, milk, and wine. And once again giving it to Zeus. Confident it will please him, I am proud to dedicate my offering to the god of thunder. I didn't even notice we're at 97 with Zeus already. Good, good. I was told to to give him offerings until about 80, so... 
I guess I could have given it to someone else then. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, okay. We're doing, we're doing fine, I think. Should be, should be fine. Let me think. Do we keep it that way? We still need all the ingredients to make an offering next time. Maybe I can give it to Hades or Hera then. Anything else? Uh, hmm. Maybe putting... Oh. I hate... yeah. I want a meter for Aphrodite so that I at least know how much affection points I have with her. I'm not sure if it will ultimately be important or only if a certain event is triggered. Going with this once more. Okay, grapes. Making bed sheets. I spend most of the day in the company of cows, assisting the servants with brushing and milking. I enjoy how sweet-tempered the animals are. Getting some milk. Cataloging. After a long walk, I settle down on a log and pray to the goddess of wild animals, thanking her for keeping watch over all the wonderful creatures who reside here. Let's go to beehive, get some honey. Cataloging and offering to make some wine first and save it. Okay. We're doing okay. So. Well, okay. Quote unquote okay. Hmm. Should I risk praying or maybe wait until we have maybe an, an event that can lower the loneliness? I think... Oh wait, visiting the livestock loneliness doesn't necessarily need to go up that much. So... Let me get that just because we already have the honey. Okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah. Let's see if we if we're still okay with the loneliness in week twenty nine. Okay, praying to the god of wine's blessing. Some more grapes. Mastering the servants about what the master is like. Today I try to interpret the various moos, neighs and bleeds of the livestock and make something resembling a human conversation. It is not the same. Launching on the shades. Brushing the coats of the animals. Cataloging. And offering, making the libation. Okay, and this time, so Hades or Hera. Oh, this Hera at the least. So sure. Confident it will please her, I am proud to dedicate my offering to the goddess of marriage. some grapes so let me visit the livestock instead three times a week um change this to the forest for honey okay it's 
still not much of a variety, I'm sorry. Okay. The hairs of the back of my neck rise as I finish up my evening meal. Without the servants saying a word, I get the feeling we are about to receive a visitor again. Someone approaches. It is not safe to remain out in the open. They clear away my plate in a flash, trying to make the place look uninhabited. Before I can contemplate finding a hiding place, the servants speak again. Hurry and leave! There is no time! Shocked at their tone of voice, I let invisible hands tuck me down the hall and into my bedroom. Though the princess in me bristles at such treatment, I am grateful to not need to choose between eavesdropping or staying safely away. And that is, until I hear footsteps approaching down the hallway. She is coming this way. Quick, you must hide. Crouch behind a statue or crawl under the bed. How far along I'll be in pregnancy? I mean, just saying we shouldn't be on our stomach, yeah? But hiding under the bed is probably more like a better hiding spot, normally, for not a pregnant person. Um, hmm. But what visitor would just come into the master bedroom? That's very rude. Um, hmm. Or, or, or are we not in yet? I didn't get that. Oh well. Uh, okay. Uh, crouch behind a statue or crawl under the bed. Can I trust that nothing's going to happen to the baby? Uh, crawling under the bed? I dive underneath our marital bed warming my pregnant body underneath it as fast as I can. The pressure on my belly is immense. Oh. But now that I am down here, I manage to twist my torso to the side so that my stomach can rest on the stone floor. Oh, this is a bad choice. I make it not a moment too soon. Where are you, my son? I need to speak with you. My husband's mother, my mother-in-law is here. I pray she does not find me. I cannot imagine a worse beginning to our first meeting. As we told you, he has not arrived home yet. She lets out an exaggerated huff. Yes, I can see that now. I will wait here for him then. Would you not be more comfortable out in the main hall? This will work fine. After what seems like an eternity, my husband comes in from the window. Mother, what are you doing in here? I need to speak with you, my son. It is urgent. Oh? What troubles you, dear mother? Perhaps I can help. The next part of the conversation is almost inaudible, as they are speaking close and at a low volume. I have to lean in a bit closer to listen. Elude my search, and I have searched everywhere. I even visited that despicable half-brother of yours. Mother, he is not despicable. And he has a name, you know. A name I refuse to acknowledge, and do not change the subject. My husband mutters something I cannot hear, which prompts my mother-in-law into letting out a loud, frustrated sigh. I disagree. Do not set your jaw like that. It is unbecoming. I have told you before, mother, and I shall... Yes, yes, I remember. But you also travel much more than I do. 
You know the lands and the people much better than I do. A long sigh, almost theatrical, follows her words. Sometimes I think you are doing a much better job at our duties than I am. Mother. It is true, you know. I am growing older, less popular. Being surpassed by someone like her. The people have forgotten me and my tributes dwindle every day. I fear I am past my prime. I manage to stifle a gasp as my child pushes against my belly. Now is not the time to let out a single sound. At least I am able to lay somewhat comfortably. Mother, we both know that what you say is simply not true. This is only temporary. You are only experiencing an anomaly. It is unnecessary to compromise your well-being or time to be so concerned over such a trivial matter. A pause. Are you... Are you suggesting I am overreacting? If I may be so bold, yes. How dare you? Mother, nearly everyone regards you as the most beautiful woman in existence, past, present and will continue to do so in the future. Nearly everyone? My husband lets out a long sigh. You are fishing for compliments, Mother. I am sure there are far more flattering people out there than your son. Of course they are, but they're just your opinion. Then trust that I think highly of you. Come now, let us head into the main hall and have the servants pour some wine. We can talk about whatever you wish. I breathe a sigh of relief when she agrees and the two leave. Never would I have thought my mother-in-law would have burst into our room the way she did, even being oblivious to her son's marriage. Hopefully it will never happen again. Ooh, I'm wondering, so... I mean, it's clearly Aphrodite, isn't it? And um, if we had hidden behind the statue, I would assume she would have seen us. And maybe then however many affection points we have with her would come into play? Maybe. Interesting. It takes longer than I expected for my husband to return. In fact, he enters just as I am about to fall asleep. Uh, oh, are you... are you alright? I am. Sorry, did I wake you up? I wave off his concern. No, I could not seem to fall asleep anyway. Oh. The bed dips as he sits down beside me, pulling me into his arms. Relief floods me at his warmth, his hand carding through my hair rhythmically. But I can feel his heart beating just a little too fast, his movement stiff and somewhat agitated. My mother visited again. I try not to let my worry show, even in the darkness. I see. Did she give you trouble? You can say that. I am sorry to hear that. You have nothing to apologize for. My mother has a habit. Or should I say, she always overreacts to issues remotely concerning her. And she has a difficult time letting anything go. Did she come to you with the same issue as before? There is a brief pause. Then he sighs. His arms tighten around me, a hand resting over my stomach. Yes. But the matter should resolve itself soon. That is good then. Is this 
is this a matter of whether we hear the conversation or not or is psyche just dense indeed i was expecting her to visit again after the first time but i did not wish to disturb you it seems i have worried you regardless it is all right husband family can be complicated Hmm. And mine is more complicated than most. Yeah, we had this conversation before. I chuckle lightly against his neck. So you have said. Okay. Are your siblings going to start visiting us too? His lips pass into a pout against my forehead, making me giggle. I do hope not. I do not need them to make a mess of our home. Maybe after our child is born, they might be allowed to visit. But only some, mind you. You do not seem very fond of them. I would not say I am not fond of them. I only wish to save you from the headaches. I chuckle again. How thoughtful. I will have you know, beloved, I am the most thoughtful. And most humble, too. He pinches my cheek, making me break into a fit of giggles. He laughs along, rumbling... He, he laughs along, rumbling sounds... Oh my god, was this a sentence? He laughs along, rumbling sounds that roll pleasantly in his chest. Not all of them are awful. Not all of them are awful, though. We are just not close. Would you tell me a little about them? Hmm. Well, there are the twins. They were born from the union between my mother and her second husband. They are warriors, and though somewhat unremarkable, they always follow their father into battles. They have an elder sister, whose fate is constant tragedies, part due to the resentment stemming from my mother's first husband. Oh dear. Yes, it was a very strange and painful situation. Her husband was always pulled into the, also pulled into the mess. They fortunately managed to appeal to the gods' mercy and are now living in peace. That is good at least. Yes. She is one of the better members of my family. The sibling I suppose I am closest to was born from one of my mother's wilder endeavors. Uh, oh! Yes. He is perhaps the most unfortunate of my siblings. Due to your actions, my mother was cursed by Hera and my brother was born deformed. Mother abandoned him at birth, horrified by his appearance. I have no words, only the image of a small, helpless baby crying for its mother. I rub my hand over my stomach, thinking of my own child. I know, but do not let it trouble you too much, my love. He grew to become one of the finest and most talented out of my siblings. Another good ending to another deserving person, then. That is a small comfort. Indeed. I am happy that my brother and sister are happier now. Other than them, I have two other full brothers. One follows my mother absolutely everywhere. The other is a bit... How do I describe him without sounding mean? I giggle as he hums dramatically. He is quite vengeful, to say the least. And dark personalities and such. Would you dare say... broody? You said it, not I. I slap his chest, smiling as he laughs. 
Come, let me help you sleep. Carefully, he tucks me in and curls around me protectively. A song hums quietly among the walls of our sanctum, lures me away from all earthly worries. Snuggled into his warmth, I let sleep consume me, knowing that I am safe. Ah, so we do get a bit of info here and there. I mean, we're going to meet the family sometime. Shaking bits with my lunch, uh, of my lunch, with the birds. I'm getting some honey. Uh, okay, more info about the master we do not get. Talking with the animals and getting some milk. Cataloging. And offerings. Um, yeah, we still have to make the wine and save it. Okay. Loneliness is somewhat stable. But yeah, I suppose that is enough for this week. This, yeah, this time. <laughs> We did another 10 weeks, so maybe next episode will be the last, but who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this. Again, if you have any, I guess, last minute tips at this point for me, bring them my way. But yeah, we did. Oh, we did do this 10 weeks without hitting a max loneliness, so that's good. Like, we can, we can hit one more before we go into yeah well we have all the favors but yeah hmm still a bit to go so i think we have to risk it anyway to get more favor with the remaining three gods yeah but yeah we will leave that for next time until then thank you for watching bye bye